It's become a really common layout for apps to have a collection view that you scroll through, and as you scroll, images are downloaded from a network and displayed in the cell. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can make an app that downloads images from a network and displays them in collection view cells. I'll go over some techniques for downloading the image only when it's needed and caching the image so it can be reused once it's downloaded. I'm gonna be using Unsplash's API to download images into the cells. And Unsplash is just a site that provides a bunch of license-free images, which is really handy. So if you wanna follow along with this tutorial, go to Unsplash and sign up for a developer account so you can get an API key. And I'm gonna be using the search photos API. So I'm gonna input a search term like kittens or puppies or something, and that's gonna download a collection of image objects that we can then present in those collection view cells. So I currently have a really basic app set up that has a collection view already in it and has some cells created that have a main image area and then this kind of sub image that's gonna be like the profile image area uh, and then just a single label for a title. So right now it's just hard coded, uh, there's no image data, I'm just presenting the number of the cell as I scroll. Uh, but the idea is that I'll download a bunch of images from Unsplash and then display them in this. So right now, like I said, nothing fancy is going on. The code is really basic, just sets up a cell uh, and that's about it. And the cell has uh, two image views and uh, a label. And if we look back at the documentation for the search, we'll see there's a results array and this will be an array of objects that contain data about images on Unsplash. So this is a profile image for the user that uploaded the photo, so I'll use that in the little, the little image view. And then there's URLs to the actual image that I'll be able to use. So the plan is to retrieve this JSON data, use that to populate the collection view cells, and as the collection view cells are being dequeued and loaded, will download the appropriate images that are needed and display them in the cell. So when the app first opens, we'll make the request for all of the objects, but we'll only download the images when the user will actually see them. So this will limit the amount of HTTP requests that we actually make. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set up the code to make the initial HTTP request to the search photos endpoint. The first thing I like to do here is to set up the URL using URL components. I just find that doing things this way is a little bit easier for me to get my head around when I'm uh, working with different endpoints for this API. So I've used the URL components to set up the path and the query here that's gonna be passed in. I'm gonna pass in something like puppies, I think. And then I'm using a URL request to hand the client ID. So this is very common if you're using a client ID or a bearer token or some sort of authorization header. Um, now, we usually wouldn't hard code the value into the application, uh, and I'll leave a link in the description on some techniques for actually keeping your access keys private and secret. Uh, but for this demonstration, I've just got it somewhere in my application, so I'm just going to uh, put that in like this. And then I'm going to continue with the rest of my request, which is going to be uh, making that data task. I'm creating a data task here to download that JSON data from the API, from the search photos endpoint. 
And then I'm checking for the error. I'm making sure that the HTTP response is within the 200 range. Uh, and then I'm making sure that the data actually exists. Then once I get to this point, I actually want to handle the data somehow. I want to decode that data. And I want to do this using the codable protocol so that I can just get all of this data into Swift structs. So if we look at the response here, it's a JSON array full of JSON objects. Uh, there are certain things I want. So I'm going to want an ID. Um, and then I want this user object, which contains profile images. And then here's the URL. So there's going to be some nested structs going on. So I'm just going to pick out the properties I want and create structs to represent this data structure. So this is my current structure from the JSON. I have a, a post that has the ID and description. The post has a user. The user has profile image strings. So I'm just gonna grab the medium profile image. And the post also has URLs, which represent the images. And I'm just gonna get the regular size for the images. So now I can use these to decode the JSON data into Swift structs. The API actually returns a JSON object that has the results as an array on a property of the uh, outermost object. So what I've done is made an API response object that responds to the codable protocol and just has this single property results, which is an array of the posts. And I've just made it private to this networking class uh, because it's not really needed anywhere else. So now I can decode straight into that object, just grab that results array, which is the array of posts, and that's what I actually want to send to the rest of my code. That's what I want to send to the view controller in this case. Now in the view controller, in view did load, I'm calling that function on my network manager object. I'm just passing in puppies as the query, so I'll hopefully get a few cute puppy pictures. And then in the callback function in the completion closure, I'm checking for an error quickly. And then if there's no error, I'm saving the posts to this posts array in the view controller. And then that's what's gonna be responsible for populating the collection view. So uh, returning post count in the number of items in section and using that post to populate the cell's title. Now, two really important things that are happening here. One is that in this uh, completion closure, we need to make sure that self is actually weak because if this view controller were to go out of memory while a network request was happening, the network manager would keep that view controller in memory if it had a strong reference to it. So by making it weak, nothing really changes other than the network manager can't keep a reference to the view controller anymore. And then we're saving the post to this post array, and then we're reloading the collection view on the main queue. This has to be done on the main queue because it's a UI update. So now if I run the application, we should actually see all of the posts in the collection view cells. We won't see any of the images, but we should see the posts themselves. And we don't because I got a 401 error, which means that I'm unauthorized. Oh, because I didn't put my key in. So I got to make sure that I actually uh, use my API key from the Unsplash API. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, so now that I've got my key in there, this is all working. None of the images are being downloaded. But here is the number of posts that are coming back and ones that have that description tag are displaying it in the, uh, the label there. So now the next thing we need to do is actually download these images and display them in the cells. The thing we have to think about here is that to get a, a list of these posts, uh, I think right now there's 10, but I could have 20 or 100, that's one HTTP request to Unsplash's server that will get just one JSON object, and that's a, a pretty small amount of data. 
but each of these posts has two images, and each image will require another HTTP request to the server that downloads kilobytes or maybe even megabytes of data. So if I had 20 posts here, I would need to do 40 API requests that are all containing a decent amount of data just to populate each cell with the image. And this might be a little bit wasteful because if the user never scrolls past this third image here, I shouldn't have ever downloaded more than six images. So what we wanna do is only download the images when the user's gonna see the image, when the cell is actually gonna be presented, and then after that, we'll cache the images so that if we scroll away and scroll back, we're not re-downloading anything. So right now, to get that first part working, we can implement the download of the image in this method right here. So when cell for item at index path is called, we'll go ahead and try and download the image, and once it downloads, we'll put it straight into that cell. In the network manager, I've made a new method that is supposed to get the image for the post. And this is really similar to what I was doing to get the JSON data, but instead of using a data task, I'm using a download task. And for the URL, I'm using that image URL that is already attached to the post. Then once that completes successfully, the view controller will, on the main queue, set the cell's image to be whatever data was received from that request. So if the data came back from the request okay, we'll create a UI image and then set that to be the image views image on the main queue. So running this now, we should actually be able to see the images get populated. And if we scroll, all of those images exist. So it's not too difficult just to get that behavior working immediately. Uh, so now I'm going to do the same thing to get that image working for the user's profile image. I've refactored the networking code just a little bit because these functions are almost identical. The only thing changing is the URL. I've put all of the downloading logic into one function and I'm actually gonna make that private to this class. And then exposed publicly is the ability to get the main image for the post and the user's profile image. So now back in the view controller here, I'm downloading the image and the profile image. And these are actually quite similar too, so I could refactor some of this logic out. A little bit of a refactor here, but now if the data comes back okay, we're gonna create an image from that. And if there's no data, we'll just use a system placeholder picture image. So if I run this now, we should see the main image and the profile image both showing up. There we go, there's the main image, there's the profile image. And that's working pretty well. So this is, this is fully functional at this point. This works exactly the way I want it to. Under perfect networking conditions, this will probably work most of the time, but there's some things we need to do to make sure that it works all of the time. Network requests can be fast or slow, and it depends on what kind of network the user is connected to and a bunch of other factors. So when we're making an app like this, we need to consider how good the network request is actually gonna be and how reliable it's gonna be. So to simulate a potentially slow network, instead of using async here, I'm gonna use async after, which does exactly the same thing as async, but it allows me to put in a little time interval here. So I'm gonna say, give this uh, a delay, any time between zero and two seconds. So I'm just gonna add some sort of time between zero and two seconds, it's gonna be completely random, but it's gonna just hopefully simulate what a, a inconsistent or bad network might look like. So with that random time delay in there, I'm gonna run the app again and let's see what it now looks like. So immediately we get, uh, you know, the images load in slowly and that's fine, that's, that's normal. Uh, but let's see, if I scroll down, they start loading in, that's great. 
And now if I scroll quickly back up to the top, see the images were kind of jumping around a bit and, and we had the wrong image in the wrong cell at times. So if I scroll down again and scroll up quickly again, see that, that wasn't the right image that should be there. And if I do this correctly, just right, the top cell actually has the wrong image and the wrong image is there permanently, right? So this was supposed to be five golden retriever puppies, but it's actually a completely different image that appears there because of the way this networking is working, because of an inconsistent network request. So if I do this slowly and scroll up to the top, this should work again, yeah, and that's the right image. Uh, but given different conditions, you might actually end up with an application that does something completely wrong. Let's take a look at why this might happen. So let's say we have a cell that gets dequeued, is about to be used, we immediately set its title to be data that we already have, and then we start downloading the images for that cell. It's on the screen, we're downloading the images and we're gonna put them in that cell. While those images are downloading, the user scrolls past that image, so let's say it was this cell, they scroll up, and that cell gets dequeued and reused, because we reuse cells. At that moment, we set the cell's title to be the new title, right, because we've recycled it, and then we start downloading brand new images for that cell. So the old images are still downloading, but we now have got new images that are downloading for the exact same cell because it's being reused. So which images are gonna appear in the cell? Is it gonna be the ones that started downloading first or the ones that started downloading second? And there's actually no way to know, really, because if we're programming it like this, which images download first is unknown. And if we're just gonna display the image as soon as it's done downloading, we might end up with the first image, we might end up with the second image, and that's not a great user experience. So we need to account for these things in our programming. The first thing we should do is get rid of those stale images. So as I'm scrolling right now, we have the old images that appear and then get replaced with the new images. So to avoid this from happening, it's pretty easy in this case, I can just set the cell's image to be nil, and I'll do that for uh, both of the images. And now if I run the app with these set to nil every time the cell is dequeued, we'll get uh, a gray box. As we scroll, they'll turn to gray, but we'll never actually get an inconsistent image. And this is definitely more desirable. We don't want to be displaying the wrong data to users, uh, but we still have the issue that if I scroll quickly, the images might get downloaded in the wrong order. So I still could end up with the incorrect image up here as the final image. So we now need to account for that. And the way that I've seen used that's probably the easiest and most effective way is to add an ID to the cell. So if we have a unique ID on the post and a unique ID on the cell and those match, then when it comes time to setting the image on the cell, we just check, hey, this image was downloaded for this post is the cell's ID the same as the post's ID? And if it is, then the cell hasn't been recycled yet. But if the cell's ID doesn't match the post's ID, then it's been recycled and it's basically being used with a new post. So it's a pretty simple technique, but works really well. So I've added a, an identifier property to the cell that I'm gonna to set to be the post's ID. And because we're downloading this post from an API, it already comes with that unique ID from Unsplash. So I'm just grabbing that ID from the post when we're dequeuing the cell, setting that cell's ID to be that value, and then later on, when we're actually gonna load the images into the cell, I'm just doing that quick check to see if those are the same identifiers then I am gonna set the image, otherwise we're just gonna do nothing because we're waiting for the other images to be downloading. And right now I've added a print statement on both of these so that we can actually see what's going on so we can get a good sense of what's actually happening here. And my laptop's about to die, so I should go get a plug for that. Okay, so I'm gonna run the app now and we should see the IDs logged out down here, there we go. So the first time these are loaded, uh, we're getting the IDs are the same for both images, which means that they get loaded into the cells just right here. But if I scroll through quickly, my guess is we're gonna see some false values here and the image won't get set. So let's scroll through, zero false values, let's try again. None of them are false. 
There we go, there's one false. Um, so it actually looks like my random values aren't being quite random enough, or they're being random in just the right way to make this not as good a demonstration as I wanted it to be. There we go, there's another false value. So, okay. It's not happening often, but basically these false values, there's one here and there's one further up right here. This would mean that if we had loaded the image in, it would have been the wrong image that the user would have seen. So the user can't really notice the difference. The images just load and it's a bad network so they can take a little while to load, but it's always gonna be accurate data now. This profile image and this image right here are always supposed to be in that cell. They don't appear anywhere else. So that's really good, a really simple technique, and it just makes sure that your data is consistent. The next thing that's kind of an issue with this application, it's, it's working well and uh, the data's consistent and, and we've fixed like, anything that would be considered a bug at this point. But if I look at this image on the top, it gets loaded in the first time we see that cell. And if I scroll up now, that cell is gonna get reused as one of these cells and we're gonna download a different image. If I then scroll back up to the top, that image is re-downloaded from the network. So another network request downloading that big image and displaying it in the cell. So it's now been downloaded twice. If I scroll up again and then scroll, there we go. It's now been downloaded three times. So if some user is just like scrolling back and forth, images are just gonna keep getting downloaded over and over and over again. And that's really bad for someone's network requests for their data plan and just kind of bad for the user experience because it keeps having to, to reload that image. So the proper thing to do here would be to cache that image. So we download it once, we store it in a cache. And then the next time we need that image, we can check the cache for that image. And one really easy way of creating a cache is to use a dictionary. So the key can be the URL and the value will be the image data. So all I have to do before making the network request, I'll just check, hey, does there exist image data for this URL? If there does, we'll use that data. Otherwise, we'll make a network request, we'll grab the data from the network and then store it in that dictionary. So I'm gonna add a dictionary to my network manager. It's gonna handle the caching and that should work to cache these images. So I've created a dictionary at the top here that just has the key string and the value is data. So this is gonna be the URL and this is gonna be the image data. And then when it comes time to downloading an image, uh, if the image gets downloaded, oh, I used it as a let instead of a var because it's gonna be modified. So if the image gets downloaded, I store it in the dictionary using the URL as the key and the image data as the value. And then right here, before we do any sort of downloading, before we, we create the download task or anything, we check to see if that image exists. So given that URL, does that exist in the dictionary? And if it does, then we'll just call completion with the image. We already have the data. Uh, and if it doesn't, then we just continue. And I'm also printing out here using cached images so that I can see every time that we're actually uh, utilizing this cache. And before I run this, back in the view controller, I'm just gonna remove these print statements and this async after stuff. We'll just run it on a good network now because we're done with that. So if I rerun this now, uh, we should see a pretty smooth scrolling. It should download the images normally. And what I really am interested in finding here is, I forgot to get rid of that print statement, uh, is every time we're using one of the cached images, it will get printed out in here. So uh, as I scroll through, uh, first time around, if I scroll through every image, we're not going to use the cached image because it hasn't downloaded it yet. But now as I start to scroll up, we can see that uh, right there, it's using the cached version of the images. So now it's never re-downloading the image, it's always using the cached version, which is really cool and definitely makes your app more performant. There's one big issue though that I have to address and that is with how dictionaries work. So Currently, I'm just storing the data in the dictionary and then I'm never taking the image data out of the dictionary. And that'll be fine for a small amount of data, but a dictionary just holds onto data, keeps it in memory and never lets go of it. So, unless I tell it to. Uh, so if I download enough images, I'm gonna completely fill my app's memory with image data. And if my app takes up too much memory, uh, the iPhone will just quit the app. That's how iPhone apps work. If it seems like an app's kind of out of control, the system just shuts it down so that none of the other apps get affected. So 
When the app is filling up with too much data, if I have too many images downloaded, I actually need to be able to empty that dictionary or at least get rid of some of the old images that aren't needed anymore. And we could write custom logic to do this when there's too many images, let's get rid of some. Uh, but there's actually a built-in data structure in iOS apps called an NS cache, which acts kind of like a dictionary, it's just key value pairs, but does everything that I just talked about. It Every time the app is filling up with too much memory, the NS cache will release some of that memory out back to the system. The only thing is that an NS cache is an Objective C object and it doesn't try to hide that at all. So when you're using an NS cache, you have to use objects for the keys and the values, and we generally just end up using the Objective C equivalents of what we've got here. So I'm going to switch this dictionary now to be an NS cache. So now this is an NS cache uh, that's key is an NS string and its value is NS data. And these are all Objective-C objects. And this only changes the syntax a little bit. But right here, instead of just being able to use that square bracket syntax and pass in the string, we have to call object for key on the image's NS cache. And we have to pass in an NS string. Now, the uh, Objective-C and Swift versions of things can be converted to one another in a very simple way. So if I just cast a Swift string to be an NS string, the system will just take care of it uh, and it just works. So I have to convert or I have to cast the Swift string to be an Objective-C string and then I have to cast the Objective-C data to be Swift data. And then down here I have to do the same thing. I have to cast the Swift data to be Objective-C data and then again casting the Swift string to be an Objective-C string. But the idea is still the same. It's still kind of like a dictionary, just a smart dictionary, and the syntax just kind of sucks because it's Objective-C. But now if I run the app, again, the behavior should be exactly the same, but if I was downloading really big images and eventually ran out of space on my device, the NS cache would take care of freeing up that memory for us. So this Unsplash app only downloads images right before the user sees them. It stores the images in a cache so that we don't download the same image twice. And we're making sure that the asynchronous behavior doesn't mess up the data in the cells so that we see the wrong data in the wrong cell. That's where I'm gonna leave it for this video, but stay tuned for more videos on iOS development.